Well, welcome back to our course on Networks and Distributed Systems. We are currently learning about the link layer of the TCP IP model. In the last lecture, we started a discussion of switch networks. Switching, how a packet from one host goes to another host through a series of switches. Now let's continue that discussion in Lesson 9 and learn how a host sends a message to another host on a different subnet than the one that host is on. So let's get started. It should now be clear how ARP operates when a host wants to send a datagram to another host on the same subnet. But now let's look at a more complicated situation. When a host on one subnet wants to send a network layer datagram to a host on another subnet. That is, it wants to send a datagram across a router onto another subnet. Take a look at uh, figure 5.19, which shows a simple network consisting of two subnets interconnected by a router. Each host has exactly one IP address and one adapter. But as discussed in the network module, a router has an IP address for each of its interfaces. For each router interface there is also an ARP module in the router and an adapter. Of course each adapter in the network has its own MAC address and that includes the two interfaces therefore two adapters on this router. Because the router in figure 5.19 has two interfaces, here's this one 111.111.111.110 which is an IP address for this interface on router R and this one is 222.222.222.220 which is the IP address for this interface also on router R. So we have a subnet on the left and we have a subnet on the right. Also note that on subnet 1 all of the hosts have a network address of 111.111.111/24. On subnet 2 on the right hand side all of the hosts have a network address of 222.222.222 slash 24. You'll recall that every host on a, on a subnet share the same network address as in the case of 111.111.111 slash 24. That slash 24 indicates that the first three octets 111.111.111 represent the network and the last octet represents uh, a host. And how many hosts can you have? If you have all eight bits turned off, you can go from host 0, 111.111.111.0, all the way to host 111.111.111.254. So you have host addresses from 0 to 254. Therefore, all the interfaces connected to subnet 1 have addresses in the form of 111.111.111.something and all the interfaces connected to subnet 2 have addresses of the form 222.222.222.something. So in a nutshell, all that said, all of the hosts and interfaces in each of these subnets has an IP address in the form of four octets or four sets of eight. The first three sets, the first three octets, like in the case of 111.111.111, the first three octets represents the network. The last octet represents a host. And if you have eight bits in that last octet, how many hosts are possible? 0 to 255. Now, that's all the bits are turned off is 0 and all the bits turned on 
or 255, which means you have the possibility of 256 addresses. Now, I may have said at some point that you can have up to 254 hosts. That's because traditionally the 0 and the 255 have not been used as host addresses. The 0 would represent a network and the 255 would represent a broadcast address, which means that leaves you with 254 possible host addresses. Now that rule has changed over the years and therefore it is no longer written in stone. Now we'll see how a host on subnet 1 would send a datagram to a host on subnet 2. Finally, specifically, suppose that host 111.111.111.111 wants to send an IP datagram to a host 222.222.222.222. The sending host passes the datagram to its adapter, as usual, but it must also inform its adapter of the appropriate destination MAC address. Which MAC address should the adapter use? The MAC address of the port on the router or the MAC address of host 222.222.222.222? You might guess that an appropriate MAC address is that of the adapter for the host 222.222.222.222, which is, as you can see here, 49BDD2C7562A. But that would not be correct. If the sending adapter were to use that MAC address, then none of the adapters on subnet 1 would bother to pass that IP datagram up to its network layer, since the frame's destination address would not match the MAC address of any adapter on subnet 1. Figure 5.19 shows that in order for a datagram to go from 111.111.111.111, to a host on subnet 2, the datagram must first be sent to the router interface 111.111.111.110, which is the IP address of the first hop router on the path to the final destination. In order to acquire the appropriate MAC address for the frame, the host uses ARP to acquire the MAC address for 111.111.111.110, which is the interface on its same subnet. Once the sending an adapter has this MAC interface, it creates a frame containing the address 222.222.222.222 and sends the frame into subnet 1. The router adapter on subnet 1 sees that the link layer frame is addressed to it and therefore passes that frame to the network layer of the router. The IP datagram has successfully been moved from the source host to the router. The datagram still has to move from the router to the destination. The router must now determine the correct interface on which the datagram is to be forwarded. As we learned in the module on the network layer, this is done by consulting a forwarding table in the router. The forwarding table tells the router that the datagram is to be forwarded via router interface 222.222.222.220. This interface then passes the datagram to its adapter which encapsulates the datagram in a new frame and sends that frame into subnet 2. This time the destination MAC address of the frame is the MAC address of the ultimate destination. This interface of the router uses ARP to get this destination MAC address which is on the same subnet 222.222.222.22.24 as itself. In the next video, we will learn more about Ethernet, but for the time being, let's take another break. 
and go over our notes, evaluate the study guide, fill in the information that you need, and when you're prepared, come on back for lesson number 10.